what are we doing today? I don't know. I'm sitting outside watching these cars go by. I don't want to hold you. I don't want to keep you. I just want to show you the things that God is doing. We have Shannon today. Shannon Rifowitz. Shannon, I hope I got it right. Shannon Rifowitz. I'm not going to hold you. All I'm going to say, Bianca, crank that music. Yeah. Because it's been a long time. Tell me a little about yourself. Well, I'm 19 years old. I've lived in a couple of different places, you know, Massachusetts, 15 and a half years, Arkansas, three and a half, California, five or six months, I think, something like that. Um, a lot of the moving around wasn't due to me wanting to, it was kind of necessary. Explain to me uh, your your childhood, your upbringing, how was it? How was your life? Um, well, it was difficult. It was very challenging. Um, before I was even born, my dad almost killed me in my mom's womb. Um, I think she was like three months pregnant with me. And she slid down the wall and she said that after that she started experiencing cramping, which any pregnant woman would know that's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, and so she was like deathly afraid that I was gonna end up being miscarried. But she said that after, like she was laying in bed that night crying and she prayed to God that he would spare me. Um, she said that was the first night that she felt me move. Wow. So. Wow, uh, now from, okay, so you, you being born and everything mm -hmm. throughout your, uh, uh, before you even got here, it's the, the enemy already tried to take you out. I mean, take oh, yeah. take us through your life. You know, what you grew up in a Christian household. Like, take us through your life of what you uh, experienced throughout your life, you know, as you were coming up. And we were, we were chilling at home with my father that night. Uh, my mom was out, and my dad would make her have a curfew. Like, she wasn't allowed to leave the house normally, but this time she was out past her curfew. Um, my dad made us girls get in the car, start searching around town for her. When we didn't find her, we came back home, and I remember my oldest sister kind of had this, this fear in her eyes, and I didn't understand it, because I was only, you know, seven years old. You, you don't understand much. Um, I remember when my mom did get home, my dad was infuriated, and my mom said, girls, go upstairs. And so we all went upstairs. And Ashley was trying to help Danielle and I pack like little bags. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't get what you're doing. Like, why am I packing your bag? We're staying here. And she's like, no, we're not. And so I heard my parents come storming up the stairs. Like my mom was first and my dad shortly after her. So I turned to Ashley and said, I'm going to go ask mom and dad what's wrong. And I went in and I remember turning and looking in the room and I saw my dad grab my mom by the shirt, throw her into a wall, and start beating her. And being seven years old and seeing that, that was, that was really hard. I remember just being like, mm -hmm. what? And so I ran back in the room. My middle sister's like bawling on the bed. Um, Ashley was packing the bags for us, and I just looked at Ashley and had tears in my eyes and said, what's going on? And after that, we had to leave. Um, but. We ended up having to go back to my father's because um, very good friends with a lot of people in the judicial system. So a lot of times the court cases would start to favor my father because they knew him personally. Uh, so my mom would never have really gotten custody of us. So we went back 
And then I remember by the time I was 10 years old, um, my dad was getting really, really weird. Um, you know, for a while he was good because we came back and he was like, I'll never do that to you guys again. I love you so much. And then all of a sudden, um, he got worse. My sisters got older. They became, you know, more like women. So my father started getting a little, um, a little more touchy or a little more interested in them and he would tend to leave me out of it. But I started to look like a woman a little earlier than some girls. So my dad started kind of making like inappropriate comments towards me. Um, it was, you know, kind of crazy like that. My mom, I mean, my mom was the most loving mom that anyone could have ever had. To this day, she's my best friend. And she would always try to protect us from things like that, but there were times that she just couldn't. Um, the, the days that like we got to escape, we were at church, because my mom took us to church. So I've always, I've always known God. Um, you know, and knowing him, that was a huge saving grace throughout this whole, this whole time in my life. Um, but I remember one day my parents got into a fight, and my dad, I was up in my room like having a tea party with some stuffed animals because I was so young. Um, my dad came upstairs, and he told me to get on the bed, and I was like, no, I'm good, thank you. I said, I don't want to see you, and he's like, get on the bed. Okay, so I walked up, I sat down, and my dad started like putting his arm around me and just, he's going, you know that daddy loves you, right? Daddy really loves you. And he's like giving me these weird looks, and he kind of just had his arm resting over me in areas probably weren't the best. Um, but I, you know, I was 10 years old, I really didn't try to think that far into it. Uh, but my mom came upstairs, and I kind of looked at my mom with this look of fear in my eyes because I was afraid for my own father to touch me. I didn't, I didn't know what he would do because of seeing him beat my mom so young. Um, that was really scary. So I didn't want to be near him for too long. Um, as we, as we got a little older, you know, I was only 10 years old. Um, my mom had to sit down with me and my two older sisters who were 14 and 17 at the time. And she asked us if we wanted to leave. And all of us unanimously said yes. So from that point on, uh, we were preparing to leave. We didn't know where we were going, who we were gonna stay with, that kind of thing. We were just kind of doing it. And I remember my dad, uh, my mom would come and sleep with me because she was too afraid to sleep in the bed with my father. Um, gosh, he would come into the room in the middle of the night and like try to stare at my mom or like tell her like she needs to get out of my bed and go and sleep with him. And he would uh, go stare at my oldest sister. He would like crawl up like right next to her um, and he would like stare at her face. And like she said that she could feel him like breathing on her. He was that close. And he started, uh, my sister Danielle was in her bra and underwear, I mean, she was changing in her room. And my dad busted open the door and was staring at her, laughing. And Danielle had said, Dad, get out of here. You know, I need to change. And my dad was like, no, nah, I'm your father. I can do what I want and see what I want. And it was like, Ugh. What does something like that do to some, like, what does that, what internally, what have oh. you struggled with? What does that do, That going through that, what does that do to it, you? It hurts your self-worth a lot because it's like your father is violating you in different ways. A lot of it was mental and emotional, so that'll break you down and you just... A girl should be able to depend on her dad and he's the first man that should love her and tell her how beautiful she is and set the example of a man that she's supposed to find when she's older. And I know that not having that, that's a huge deficit in a girl growing up because you don't, you didn't have that role model. So when you're going out looking for, you know, we're not looking for a relationship, but you're at the age where you can, you know, date and hold a relationship, you're gonna look for what you didn't have. And what was, a, what was role modeled to you is probably what you're gonna run to because that's what you're comfortable with. Yeah. So, I mean, after, I mean, when I was 10, you know, we went to a shelter, we got out, and then we had to come back. Um, it, you know, it was crazy because I know that I started looking for attention and guys even at such a young age 
you know, being 10 and I was looking for a guy to like me. Mm. That shouldn't be what I'm focusing on. And so, you know, growing up by 14, my dad, I had to go see him because, you know, the child laws kind of stuff where it's like, oh, visitation. Mm. Um, you know, I'd go and see my own father and he didn't call me beautiful until I looked more like a woman. And so then I was like, oh, maybe that's how you're supposed to get attention. So you was finding, you was finding your self-worth, uh, trying to find it in men because of the example that you had. Mm -hmm. How does that develop with your relationship with, with God when you oh. go through that? Like, you because don't, you're going through that situation with, yeah. with the Father. You don't think, I know for me, I've struggled with thinking that God's my Father because I'm like, my own dad can't love me. How can another man who, who I've never even seen, how can he love me? Mm -hmm. How can someone think I'm beautiful? You know, how can God think I'm special and that I'm worth something if my own dad on earth couldn't even think that of me? I know that that's something I had struggled with for years. And it's it's so detrimental because you, you I want to be close to God. You know, I've always wanted that. And I know that not till recently have I been able to actually do that and accept that God loves me for who I am. And even the broken parts of me, God, God holds me near and dear, and He knows, He knew I was going to go through this even before I was born. Mm. He had His hand on me in my mother's womb, and He has a plan and a purpose for my life. And it took me 19 years to figure that out. Wow. What would you say to a person who went through that same thing? What would you say to them as a word of encouragement? Any fem a female, especially women, out there, what would you say to anyone that struggled, have struggled with that? Honestly, I would tell them, don't let someone's inability to see your worth cut you down. Because just because they can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. God gave you worth from before you were even born. He gave you a purpose, a plan. He made you. He knew exactly what you were going to look like, exactly what you were going to go through. It's not easy. It's it's definitely a heck of a ride, and it hurts, and it takes a lot of healing. I mean, I'm still healing from everything, and I will be probably for a long time, but God's right there, and He's never left you. Even when you feel the most alone, you're not. What do you like to do now? Uh, with all the stuff that you've been through, we, we have uh, five minutes. Well, what, what, the stuff that you do now, what did, uh, where do you find your, your, uh, your peace? What are the things that you love to do? I love worshiping. I know that when I'm worshiping God, I feel at peace and like He's right there with me. And I love, I love being around people because, I mean, I just love being able to express how I feel to them and talk with them and find out their stories and what they've gone through because I love knowing what makes somebody who they are. Because we're all different, we all have broken pieces, and we all have a past, but we're all here together and we love God and I love learning about everybody else and what drives them towards Him. That's beautiful. You know, when, when um, what would be one thing, say if you were, you know, if he was you're sitting in front of God, you're sitting down, and you're in front of Him, and you're sitting, and you could just stare off into you know, the sunset. What, what would be something that you would like to say to God? Thank you. I would tell Him thank you because He brought me through things that I shouldn't have survived. From being orally raped at 15 and a half, to beginning to be sexually molested by my father when I was 16 and all that kind of stuff. I shouldn't have been able to come through that and still have the drive to to go into ministry and to, to share my story and to encourage people. I shouldn't have that. I should, you know, I don't know. I just, I know a lot of people who have gone through things like that and they did not end up in that kind of a path. And I know that God's taken me a long way from where I used to be. And I just have to thank Him for all the great things that He's done for me. You're in, so you're in Bible college now. We're going to close after this. You're in Bible college now. What are you, what are you seeking after? And what, 
um, are you hoping to get out of college? Honestly, I'm seeking after God's will. I, if I could have my dream job, I would be a, like a worship leader, and I would be able to preach to young people and just tell them how much God loves them and just let them know that they, they're worth because I know it's something a lot of kids struggle with. And so I would just love to be able to influence youth and do worship at the same time. And something I want to get out of college is, especially this college, I want to get to know God a lot more. Because I know I have a lot of growing to do with Him, but here I feel like it's, it's not that far of a reach to be able to, to obtain that. Excellent. Shannon, it's been a pleasure. It's been, a, it's been an honor sitting here listening to your testimony. And I'd just like to say you're going to go far. You're going to do great things. Thank you. You know, uh, God has definitely has a plan for you. He has a call in your life. So stay, stay focused mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and just keep doing what God called you to do. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Shannon Reifowitz, and I am God's property. Chris? Raise. <laughs> Y'all be over there in a minute. I'm on my way. God.